Okay, um, crazy times. I know, it's, it's pretty incredible. Hope you guys are being safe. Lucky for me, I work from home. So this is my home studio. And today's video is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little bit more chill, a little bit more like vlog style. I wanna show you guys a little bit more behind the scenes. In this video, I wanna show you guys our editing workflow. We currently use a PC. I use a PC, Connor uses a Mac. And I wanna show you guys how we edit our YouTube videos and also our production videos using a server. So this is something that a lot of people are currently not doing, but I do feel that it's something that you should be doing, especially if you are working in a team environment. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it and I'll bring you guys over here and show you guys our whole entire setup. So let's go ahead and walk on over to Connor's workstation. So he's currently using the latest Mac Pro. I did an unboxing video. This setup actually works really great with Adobe Premiere, in particular editing 5K or 6K C500 Mark II footage. And he does all of my video editing for my English videos and I do all of the color grading on my PC and also all of my Spanish videos. And both computers are connected using a 10 gigabit E connection. So if you look down here, you can see there's two cables and both of them, one of them goes to the computer for the server and the other one is for the internet. And that's the same thing over here. So I had my network specialist pipe my whole entire home and then there's the two connections. So again, one of them is for the server and the other one is for the internet. So over here, we have the server. So this is a QNAP server. It is an eight base server. I believe the model number is like TVS872XT, something like that, don't hold me to it. So currently the way most people edit videos, or I shouldn't say edit videos, but the most people use is like one of these. This is a direct attached storage. So it's like a Samsung drive, you connect it to your computer and it works. It's a direct attachment, it's not through a network. So this is a NAS server, but something really cool about this particular setup is that you can also connect uh, using a direct attached storage. So you can use it as a direct attached storage because behind here, which I'm gonna take this all apart in a second, but behind there, there's two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So you can use it directly. So you don't have to do this crazy NAS setup or you can do a 10 gigabit E, which is what I have. It can get very expensive though. And then I'll show you guys the configuration that I have here. So this is an eight bay NAS server. So there's eight bays and inside these bays, there's 16 terabytes on each bay. There's spinning hard drives. So a total of 128 terabytes. I do lose one because I am running a RAID 5 for uh, redundancy, meaning that if something, if one of the hard drives were to fail, I can literally replace it and it'll rebuild the RAID array. Now I do have some extra hard drives here because I'm always afraid that if something were to happen, I can just quickly without having to order one, just pop one in. And the drives that I'm using are the Seagate Ironwolf. They are NAS, um, they're particularly made for NAS servers, long hours, five year warranty. I believe they are the fastest spinning hard drives that you can buy on the market for a configuration like this. And you can get up to speeds of 3000 megabytes per second, which is pretty nuts. So anyway, I wanna show you guys like a real world and then I'm gonna open this up and show you guys the internals and stuff that I've modified and how I've uh, set this up. So let me give you a real world experience of how we edit and how it works. All right, so this is a typical real world usage. So pretend Connor's here editing a video in English it's color graded, it's 6K C500 Mark II raw footage, intercut also with B-roll and 4K, different types of codecs. So this is it right here. And if you notice, uh, nothing's been pre-rendered, everything is yellow. Also take a look at the frame rate drop indicator, which is this green light right here. And then we are doing full playback. So if you look right there, it says full. Um, and you'll notice as soon as I hit play, there's no drop frames. Everything is playing in real time, pinging the server. Once again, that is green. There's nothing going on. Full resolution playback, pinging the server, which is working. And then on my side, while that keeps playing, I'm also editing a Spanish video. So I'll go ahead and hit play. Same thing. It is green, no drop frames. And also over here, we are doing full playback. So there is no drop frames at all, full playback. This is Spanish in real time. We'll go ahead, so I'll show you that, that it's green. And we'll go ahead and show you over here that it is also still green. So still green, and this is playing uh, in English. So we're both editing at the same time. And the beauty of this setup is that because we are using a Mac Pro and we have a PC, we are able to use applications like Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve. So here's a short film. We shot this 
on my Canon C500 Mark II, and this is playing back at full 24 frames per second. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and you can see the little indicator there. 24 frames per second, no lag. This is C500 Mark II raw footage. I don't know why, but DaVinci Resolve says it's C200 footage, but it's probably because of Canon raw light, but I can scrub through this without any issues, so I'll show you guys real quick. Scrub through the playback, no problem. You might be able to hear the server. It's not crazy loud, but I'll show you. I'm scrubbing. And this gives us like the ultimate flexibility because not only can he edit, but I can also make changes, do other stuff in real time, ping the server. And on top of that, we can also have, if we wanted to, another editor that can connect via 10 gigabit E. So we can have five editors using 10 gigabit E connection hitting the server and each person can actually play 8K red raw footage, three streams in real time without even like missing a beat. And also if we wanted to somebody, if we wanted somebody to connect directly using a Thunderbolt 3 connection, we also have that flexibility, which is pretty nuts. Now let me go ahead and open up the server and I'll show you some of the different things that I've configured and changes and then we'll kind of walk through that. Okay, so I went ahead and took the lid off because I want to show you guys inside. And then in here, like I mentioned earlier, there are eight bays and then we have 16 terabytes of hard drive space in each one, giving us a total of 128 terabytes of hard drive. We do lose one, so we get roughly about 101 once everything, you know, gets, because uh, you do lose a little bit. But anyway, so back here, this is important. I want to show you guys the I.O. So when you buy something like this, you get two Ethernet ports. This is for like typical LAN, so like your internet, and then you get one 10 gigabit E. Yes, I said that right, you get one, and I'll talk about that more in a second. You get two uh, USB type C ports, you also get two standard USB ports, and you can use these to connect different hard drives and obviously back up or use them as additional hard drives. Now this is where things change because you'll notice there's two additional 10 gigabit E ports. This is an add-on card that I added myself. Up here, there's two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so this already comes with the system. You don't have to add it in. Now, up here, or inside, and it might be hard to see. Might have to go in here. Let me zoom in. But there's two NVMe drives. So they're Samsung 970. They're a terabyte each. So the two Samsung 970 hard drives are being used for what's called SSD caching. And the way it works is whenever we are video editing, it actually writes and reads to those NVMe drives first, and then it spreads all of that information out to the other hard drives. And the reason it does that is because you're able to now get these crazy speeds because you can configure it into a RAID 0 or a RAID 1 configuration. Now, those NVMe drives are separate. I did have to buy them. It does not come with them, which is actually a bummer. I think it should have came with them, uh, especially if you are go going to be using or be doing video editing. I think it's crucial unless you fill these up with SSDs and you really don't need those. But in order to get this type of hard drive space where we're getting 128 terabytes, you'll need to be using, you know, spinning hard drives. It's just not feasible. I don't even think they make 16 terabytes of SSDs. And if they did, it's probably going to be crazy expensive. So all in, I'm probably about $6,000, which is much cheaper than a Jellyfish, which is $40,000. And even a Jellyfish, you have to spend extra money for those SSD caching. It, it's an upcharge, I believe, of like three or $4,000. And even then, it doesn't even have this kind of speed like the server. Now, granted, you can build your own server and you could probably save even a little bit more money. The problem with building your own server is you need server knowledge, which I do have that knowledge. I can build it myself. But then there's other quirks and kinks and there's just a lot more do it yourself. I don't have time for that. This works. It's literally plug and play. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video for QNAP. If you do want to pick one up, I recommend you watch Max Europe's YouTube video, which he did a very comprehensive video. Um, it's about 30 minutes long. I spent a lot of time talking with him on the phone. He's a really great guy and a big thanks to him because he's the reason why I actually picked this up. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. This has worked phenomenal for our editing workflow. If you're in a team environment, this is a must have. Also, you can use uh, backup services like Dropbox, Google Drive. I use Backblaze myself uh, to back up the server. So if something happens to it, let's say for example, if there's a fire or theft, this automatically backs up to the cloud every time at night 
Um, there's a certain hour that I set up, so you don't have to worry about it there. There is that other type of redundancy, or you can also connect external hard drives, or another one of these if you have the money or budget to create additional backups. But in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comment section down below. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching. You guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.